Hello and welcome back to Pride Parkway. I'm Jeff and this is my N-gauge and double O-gauge layout, which I'm sure you're getting familiar with now. Um, going to jump straight into the video today. I have got a couple of things for you that I've been working on. Uh, continuing on the double O-gauge, you can see here hopefully that the scenery is continuing. Um, still no snow, mind you. Um, but what we have got is a brand new road. And also not one, but two new water scenes as well. Uh, and for me, I think this is probably the easiest water that I've certainly ever seen. Um, the long-term results of it are yet unknown, um, but you know the impact is amazing and it's worked really, really well. Uh, so the video is split into two halves. The first half is the road, second half is the water, and basically we're continuing with the scenery over on this side of the layout. So let's jump into it. All right, guys, so we are starting work today on this area here. And just to kind of put it back into perspective of where we were, um, along here we have the station area that I was working on, the station country halt. Um, and now we're moving into this area. Now, I have started to do a couple of little bits just during the week. I had a bit of spare time. Um, so before I started the video, I thought I'd come out and get a little head start on myself. So we've got the track kind of raised here, and I've already put the first layer of ballast on it and painted the track. Um, and then we've got what's going to be the road, which leads under the bridge. And I'll show you from a lower angle a little bit later, but I've basically made the paint go off into a corner so it looks like the road goes around the corner and disappears. Um, this is just foam board on top of polystyrene. Um, we're going to have a bridge there, which we'll come on to shortly. And what I've done for the road surface is I have just used this AK Interactive um, Terrains Asphalt... Um, diorama paint and I've just painted it and it just gives it a bit of a texture it's a bit rough um, and I'm happy with that as a starting point and the next job is to get the footpaths in at either side and to put the footpaths in I am using good old Metcalf paving slabs these are the individual ones that you just kind of peel off and stick down uh, product numbers P0210 now even though they're self-adhesive I am actually putting a little bit of speed bond down. You could use any kind of PVA or any kind of glue, whatever you like. I'm just using this because it dries a bit quicker. Um, and I want to crack on with this today as much as I possibly can. So all I'm going to do... Now, these packs, they come with both the curb stones and the paving slabs. Now, I've already started this size. You can see there... The curb stones running along and then the paving slabs this is still drying um, and then there's a big chunk in the middle which is left there is a reason for that and that is because i'm doing a little bit of work to it but i have this old hornby pub and this is going to sit in there now you can see just here there's a couple of bits where i need to cut some paving slabs to just kind of slot into some of the last areas but i just want this to dry first before i do that so just take that back out of the way for the minute and all i'm going to do is just work out exactly where i want the road to be put down a metal rule like that and go along first of all well i'll just put some pva glue down and then i'm just going to go along with the curved stones and then put down the paving slabs to get the look that i want so that's the work all done on the um paving slabs all individually laid one by one they're all glued down i've just got a bit of masking tape just along the road now just to protect the road surface um it might look a little bit different to the last one the last shot because i've also painted this area here just with some brown acrylic paint um, I've used an acrylic paint because it's the foam board so rather than going straight on with um, the Woolen Scenics Earth Undercoat um, so let's take a little look at what's going on in this area before we move on to the next stage of this pavement so as you know from the last clip we have got a pub which is going to sit roughly there in the scene um i also managed to pick up cheap on ebay these hornby um what are they called um dent snow huts now not really relevant but i just wanted a little building that i could use at the back there and if i squeeze in 
That will fit up there. Lovely. That will do the job I needed to do. It's levitating a couple of spots, so we'll sort the ground out underneath that. Um, that's not a problem. Then we've got some steps that I've made. Now, I've not quite finished these yet. I need to do some weathering on them. Um, but these are just made out of grey boards, as you can see if you look underneath. Just all glued together, a bit of plastic card, and then painted up. And these are steps that are going to go right here where this gap is. And they will lead up, if we get them in the right place, right there, to the station. So you've got stepped access up to this um, country halt. So not very friendly, but that is what it is. Um, I've also made this wall. Um, again, I'm going to stick some weathering powders on these before you see them again. Uh, that's why nothing's getting glued in place. But all this is, it's just foam board with some brick plastic card on. Um, again, I've used some of the um, pavement slabs on the top and then just painted them with a concrete colour um, to make the stones to go at the top. So that is going to go in there so that we end up with a nice retaining wall behind the pub. Um, so we've also got this little... Backman corrugated shed thing, which will live just off camera. Let me move the camera down just here. Um, so I've put a little paving foundation in there for that to go on top of, um, you know, where they keep the chairs and things in the beer garden. Then we've got a little Backman information board. We'll have to stick some posters on there and a little ticket machine. And that's just going to live down here on the street in front of the stairs. Uh, so you buy your ticket before you head up onto the platform. And then the most important thing that's going to bring this whole section together, of course, is a bridge. SS64 Abutment and Wing Walls Kit. Uh, a little bit confusing this if you buy one. The packaging only shows one side. So I did have a little bit of a, well, does this come with? two because i need two to make a bridge or does it only come with one do i have to buy two kits it does come with two so if you're buying these you now know um so i have assembled these i have painted these uh, i need to weather them i haven't yet done that but this one is going to go i'm going to try and do this without knocking the camera over and so you can still see what i'm doing so that will fit under there Get in a place, it's still a little bit tacky, the glue on it. That's basically going to go there. We have another one, again, made up, painted, ready, which is going to go on, obviously, the opposite side. Um, I can't quite get in to do this for the camera, but you're getting the idea of what I'm trying to do. Um, and then we have the Wills Fairy Girder Kit, and I've made these up already. I've painted these already. And they will go into there. All this brickwork is looking very new at the moment, so we need to get some weather and powder on that. Um, but that just gives you an idea of what's going where. There's also a little wall just to slot there to separate the beer garden from the road. Um, I am going to put some picnic tables in the beer garden, which will put some snow over the top of them. But that's basically what's happening in this area i'm going to create a little bit of a scene at the pub i've got some police vehicles it is the northeast in the 1990s so you know could have a bit of fun with that um but i'm going to take these buildings back off i'm going to finish this paving and the next job is tile grout gray tile grout and all i'm going to do is i'm going to sprinkle some on so i'm going to take the building off sprinkle some on and then just using a big flat brush like this, I'm just going to dust it into the gaps between all of the paving slabs. I'll then go around with the handheld and clean up any excess, and then we'll spray it with water. That's all it will take because it's tile grout. You just add water to it to make tile grout, and it will just set into all the stones and it'll just give this a nice finish. Um, and then we'll just go over it with some grey paints. But let me get this on, let me finish weathering all this brickwork, and then we'll come back and we can start bringing this scene all together. And then we can focus on this countryside and where we've still got bare form, we're going to have gaps here that need filling. We'll take care of all that. There we go. That is the footpath covered with the tile grout, um, painted up with just some greys, um, a couple of different shades of grey, just dropped them on, whisked the brush round, and then I've just gone over it with a black wash just to give it a nice dirty look. I mean, remember, this is all going to have snow on it, so, you know, I'm just kind of putting the foundations in place. Um, I've also weathered up the brickwork now. Um, that is all 
done and ready to go into place uh, and I have also just spray painted grey a piece of plastic card um, because if I take the camera angle from down here you're going to see under the bridge so before I put them in I am going to cut that to be the right size I'll just hold it over draw a pen around it um, cut it out stick that underneath just with a little bit of fast set glue and then we can get this scene together. So I'm going to get this stuck on. I'm going to get the bridge put in. Um, I'm going to get this wall stuck in here, get the steps stuck in, and then we'll come back and we'll get some scenics done in this area. All right, guys. So I've just had to switch to the iPhone for this shot because um, the camera's just died on me and I want to get this finished. So if it's a little bit wobbly, it's because I'm holding my phone. Um, but that is now glued in so the bridge is glued in the retaining wall where the pub's going to be is glued in uh, excuse the pub just floating around on the railway line at the moment um the steps are glued in here and as you will notice i've also started to put some plaster bandage in as well um, to bring the scene together now the one thing that i'm really keen to achieve is from this angle to make it look like it's more this angle because the pub's here and then the railway line comes around here. I want the road to look like it disappears off around the corner. Um, so I didn't give myself a lot of space there for the embankment. So I've just made a really basic little wall. It needs a bit of black wash on it. Um, all it is is a bit of one mil grey board, a little bit of um, plastic card, on it, a couple of little supports on the back, and I've just bent it to create this arch shape. And that is just going to go in there and reach like that. Um, and I'm going to put a crash barrier all the way along the wall and also along this back bit here. So I just need a 3D print, a crash barrier to go along there. Um, and then that gives the impression once we stick a vehicle on there, so for example, like this. And some road signs to say the road narrows and that kind of thing, that the road turns and comes around. That truck's not in the right angle, but you get the idea of what I'm talking about. So I'm going to glue that in. I'm going to get the rest of the plaster bandage down. You don't need to watch me put plaster bandage down. Um, one thing to point out is I had a weird bit of the side of the ply board there, and I couldn't get the landscape to sit right, so I took it off. And again, I just took a bit of brick card on there, so it just like there's a bit of brick wall next to the bridge that's holding back the railway. Um, so anyway, yeah, let me crack on and get the rest of this plaster bandage in, and then we can start to get the buildings in as well. All right, guys, so that's all that in now, um, and the building is glued down. I have put a just plug light inside of it as well, and I've also added two street lights, one just here and one just there they are in i've just got to tidy up the wires under the baseboard because they're hanging down onto the um end gauge at the moment i have also um put this building in at the back as well the snow hut and i've got some dry stone wall in as you can see the pins in it just holding it in place while it dries at the moment up there as well um, a little bit of stone walling coming around here as well um i have put some scatter down in this area here and i've also put in a tree it still needs some more work it's just kind of wedged in there at the moment it's not actually fastened down um but we'll do all the trees in one go i'll probably have a sunday afternoon tree making factory <laughs> at some point in time uh, and then the landscaping is continuing around if i bring the camera around do, 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 do. there we go so that's a nice messy part um, here where the river is and I'm just in the process of getting the plaster cloth in here you really don't need to see me put plaster cloth down you know I carve the foam and I just cover it in plaster cloth it really is as simple as that um, so I'm going to crack on with this area now now you can also see that this here we're at the end of this section which means we're at the end of this end gauge section underneath so this is the last really messy bit to get done before we can move on to the end gauge uh, one other thing that i have been doing let me just pan back to the pub and i'll show you so to go out the back of the pub here even though it's winter um i still want to have a little bit of detail so i bought some of these um metcalf picnic tables a product called p0510 and um, these are the double o gauge version 
And I thought I'd make these up. I obviously don't need the umbrellas because it's winter. <laughs> um, however, you only actually get three picnic tables in the pack, which I think is a little bit tight. Um, so I then ordered another pack, so I ended up with two packs of these. Um, but I have made them up, and I have just hit them with some brown spray paint. Uh, and you can see them on here, just drying at the moment. Um, so for two round and four square picnic tables. Um, but I'm just going to put them in the beer garden, and glue them down, and then when we put the snow on top of it, it'll look like they're under the snow. Um, so I think that should give a nice little effect in this area as well. All right, guys, so I have got all of the basic scenics into the river. Uh, by the basic scenics, I mean I have used plaster cloth, uh, carved the form and used a little bit of sculptor mould as well, um, quite sparingly, just to get the shape that I want. Now, this is going to be a bit more of a stream than a river, where we have the river where the viaduct is. Um, and excuse, ignore the catenary. I've been having a little play around today with catenary and 3D printing some bits and stuff like that, but I'll cover that in another video. Um, so want to get this done so all i have done is i have painted the bottom of it already using the same stuff that i always use it's the olive drab uh, from woodland scenics water undercoat um, i have this it lasts for ages so done that next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to paint all of the riverbed with some speed bond PVA. You could use normal PVA, I'm just gonna use speed bond so it dries a bit quicker, um, so I can crack on a bit faster. And I've got the camera kind of balanced on the end gauge at the moment, so you can see this. This is one of the challenges I'm having at the moment is filming the double O gauge with trying to find somewhere to put the camera, because um, it's quite narrow. Remember, it's only a foot. The whole width of this layout right across is one foot. Um, so, I'm going to insert a couple of pictures now to show you what I did. So you can see there the way I carved the, the stream. Um, and what I've done is I've made it go narrower as it goes further back. So if you look at it here, you can see how narrow it gets at the back. And then if you look at it through the bridge, I'm going to put a picture in now when it was white before I painted it. Um, you can see how the perception is that the river's going off and or the stream's going off into the background. So I'm going to get this covered in speed bond PVA. I'm then going to use various grades of talus from Woodland Scenics. I've mentioned this before. Um, so we're going to put a scatter of this down and then I'm going to bring it all together. And I forgot I had this. I was looking through um, boxes from the old layout. And you might be familiar with the channel Geek Game and Luke Alps. Um, I bought some of these from him a while back. Uh, so I've got Fallen Rock Space Ready and Riverbed. Um, so I'm going to sprinkle them in as well. That riverbed's a really nice, grotty, different shades of brown, um, which should work really, really well, as is the Fallen Rocks as well, just a little bit more coarse. Um, so I'm just going to use a variety of them and get all this area covered. And then remember, there'll be PVA on the bottom, and I'll just spritz it all with a little bit of IPA, and I'll go over the top um, with some watered down PVA. And then I'm going to leave that. I'm probably going to leave it for the best part of a week um, because I want it to be fully dry before I move on to the water part of this. Um, so, yeah, let's crack on and let's get that done. Alright guys, so we have got the stones in, they've been left, 
they're completely dry um, i'm pleased with how they look so the next step is the water and i'm going to be doing things a little bit differently this time i am going to be using uv resin now this stuff sets under a uv light in literally seconds and if you're wondering what a uv light is you can either get a little uv torch or you can get a big uv light relatively cheap on the internet as well now this one's come from green stuff world i bought a small bottle of green stuff world to try and a big bottle of this cheap stuff from china um they both worked exactly the same um so now i've got a bigger area i'm going to be using this cheap stuff from china well from amazon i'm assuming it's chinese by the, the writing on the bottle um now i'm working in a garage there is no natural light in here at all it's also nine o'clock at night so there's definitely no natural light coming in here and the other good thing with this resin it's completely clear but you can color it with just a little bit of acrylic paint um sleep grime i'm using uh, it just gives us a nice little bit of brown water look um so all i'm going to do is plastic cup i am going to take maybe about half the bottle maybe a third of the bottle pop it in this plastic cup a little bit of this mix it in just to give it a bit of a brown um tinge I'm going to lay it on in a really thin layer and then I'm going to hit it with the UV light and it will cure in literally seconds. Um, now, I've not used this before. I don't know what it's going to be like in six months time, a year's time. But what I do know is I don't get water running everywhere. I don't have to wait days for it to dry. Um, so I am pleased with it. I, for So far, it works for me. So let's get on and do it i must stress though that if you're doing this in a bedroom or somewhere with light you're gonna to have to do it on a night when there's no natural light because the minute this comes out this bottle it's gonna to start to cure straight away so let me mix it up and i'll come back and we'll pour it on All right, so that's it mixed, and I've stupidly not put rubber gloves on. I should have put rubber gloves on, um, but never mind. I'm I'm where I am. I've got to wash them in a minute. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a really thin layer on. Uh, it's still translucent, even though I've coloured it. Hopefully you can see that way it's dripping off. Um, I'm going to put a thin layer on right the way through as much as I can. Now this is on a slight angle, so it does run forward, um, but we'll see. How thin we can make it, we'll edge it out with this, the, the two coffee stirrers that I'm using as well. And then we will come back and we will hit it with the UV light. Now, just to be on the safe side, even though this is a nice black bottle that the UV resin comes in, I'm going to move that right out the way um, from where I'm using the UV light, just to be super careful. Um, and literally, just like you pour anything else, um, I've still got the dam there at the front because it will want to run. The difference is I'm going to be curing it very, very quickly, where if I was doing it with deep pour water, it would start leaking out before it cured. I mean, it might not, but it would, because it always does. So off we go. I'm just going to pour it in as always. A little bit tricky where the bridge is, but what I want to do is I want to get this front bit done first, and then I can cure that and it'll act like a dam. Um, so I'll get that in there. And then, oh, I don't need to drip on the track. Um, and then we'll just use one of these, or two of these. Uh, and we'll just move it around a bit. And remember, you can come back and do multiple layers. Now, I've played around with this. And the one bit of advice I'll give you is don't try and do it too thick. Do multiple thin layers, and then just build it up from there. Um, this stuff would work brilliant as well for puddles, or... Anything like that. What I wouldn't use it for is if you build making an ocean or something like that. I don't think it would work. I think it would be too much. But for this little stream here, it works absolutely brilliant. So let me crack on with this and I'll come back and show you the UV light in just a second. All right, so we've got water running the whole way through. I'm going to try and move the camera. Got a bit of a balancing act going on here. All right, so hopefully you can see now the water running right the way through there. And that's still liquid resin. And all I'm going to do now is hit it with the UV light. And it will set, as I say, almost instantly. Now, I can't hold the camera and hold the light 
So you're going to have to take my word for this one because um, I need to move the light around. Um, but I will be back in literally, in fact, I'm going to tell you how quickly I'm back. I'm going to show you my Apple Watch right now. It is nine o'clock on the dot. I'll be back in a second. So, excuse the dodgy camera. It is 21.07. And... It's dry. It's hard. It's set. It shines like a river. <laughs> um, I'm happy with that. If I get back there, you can see my finger. It's set already. Nothing on my finger at all. Um, game changer, possibly. Shrinks, cracks and drops off in six months, possibly. Time will tell. Um, but I just couldn't be doing with normal deep pour water and waiting for it to dry and it leaking everywhere and all that kind of stuff um so we'll see um i'm going to get another second coat in here exactly the same as what i've just done uh, i'm going to try and get in some of these areas that i missed um and again i'll do exactly the same thing once it's dry i will come back to you and we will have the job done all right so it's actually the next night i ran out of time last night um so this obviously is all nice and set. I actually give it another pour um, just to make it a little bit thicker. If I come back a bit with the camera, you can see how thick that is now. Um, so I'm happy with that. Um, with a teeny tiny bit of leakage there just while it was setting. But I think compared to what you can see with some of the methods, that's nothing. I'll give that a quick sand, another bit of black paint over it. Um, so, as you can see, it is very, very, very smooth at the minute. And this is a winter layout, so it wouldn't be that smooth. Um, there is the odd ripple in it where it wasn't completely smooth when I've cured it. Uh, when the joys of it curing so quickly. But that's not a problem because we're going to be putting ripples in it. Um, you can see there's another join under the bridge. It's just quite hard to get in there. Probably should have made the bridge lift out. Um, but let me show you the other river, which I've also been working on. So here we are at river number two, which is a little bit further ahead. Uh, still a lot of scenic work to be done, but you can see the ripples in the water. Um, and again, it's a nice thick pour that's on there. Um, so let me show you how I've done these ripples. All right, I'm hoping you can see this. I'm struggling a little bit with getting the camera in. Um, but I've got my bottle of UV resin. Uh, it might look slightly different in the earlier clip. That's because I bought a small bottle and a big bottle. Um, and this one's actually still two thirds full. Didn't actually know how much I was going to need. But all I'm going to do, really, really simple. This comes with a nice fine applicator tip. Um, I've not colored this. It's see-through, it's clear still. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to do little ripples along like this. It's almost just more of a zigzag. I think the camera's picking that up um, on here just as a starting point. Now, this won't be the final look, so don't get too hung up on it. This is just to create some initial ripples now you can't work for too long because this resin will self level itself uh, and that's not great and then all i'm going to do once i've got a few on just like that is that down get my uv light onto it and that will cure it now i will put a link um, in the bottom of the video to this resin i'm using um, and it comes in the small bottle a medium sized bottle with a torch and a large bottle um, if you have a uv light of any descriptions on a party light or something like that it will work just the same um, i've had to change the batteries in this a couple of times because it's almost something a bit bigger but it's doing the job and then all i'm going to do once these are set it takes about two minutes is i will work up and do some more so i'm going to go all the way up the river and then i'll show you the next step Okay, so that's all nice and dry already. Um, so the next thing we do is I just want to put a little bit of shrubbery in this corner. Um, so I've just put a tiny bit of the um, resin down and I've just got a bit of sea foam there. Hopefully you can see it. And I'm just going to push that in. Now, I will be adding obviously a lot more, but I just want this bit to kind of be in the water. Um, so I'm just pushing that in and then, I am just going to put 
some resin on it so that it kind of soaks down into the water like that and we will cure that in just a second um, and the other thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to do exactly the same so I'm going to do the ripples um, so just right next to on top of whatever the ripples that were already in just do this front bit for you to see and then I'll come off camera so get that on you've, still, you've got to work quite quick with this because it will start to self level and then all I'm going to do is with the torch in one hand and a straw in the other hand is blow onto this so that it creates more ripples while the blue lights on it so basically this So the final thing I'm doing is I am using some of this water waves from Woodland Scenics and I am just popping it on the top. Uh, I'm using an old knackered hard bristle brush uh, and I'm just going along and I'm just basically bouncing the stuff all around and then what that then does is, and I don't want it too thick, but I also don't want it too thin, um, Goldilocks, um, just bouncing it around so that we get little waves all the way along. Now obviously I'm not making the ocean, it is a river, but it is winter, or a stream in winter, whatever you want to call it. So I want it to be quite full and a little bit angry. And this seems to be doing the job just well. Now the only downside with this is it will not dry as quick as everything else has. So we will have to leave this overnight. But you've already seen the results because you saw it on the other river. And this is what I've done on the other river. So just make sure you don't have any brush marks in. You want to be bouncing it and almost throwing it around a little bit on itself. And I am happy with that. The only thing left to be done now is just to add some iced water around the edges, ready for the snow. But we can't do that until it's dry. So, till tomorrow. Alright guys, so I've got two jobs left to do uh, with this little river scene. Uh, and then I'm not going to do any more. I've left it a couple of days just because I've been busy with work. Um, I've just tidied up this area around here, give it a quick sand down, uh, and I've just repainted it black. It's still wet at the minute, which is why it looks a little bit patchy. Um, I've also printed off on the 3D printer just some little simple fences, and I have sprayed these with some primer, then I sprayed them, uh, I didn't, sorry, I sprayed them with some primer, then I painted all the posts with a concrete coloured paint, painted all the bars with the shiny silver I've got, popped a few rust spots on, which hopefully you can see, uh, went over it with a black wash, and then these are just to be glued on, just use a bit of super glue onto the top there, uh, so I've got two of them, one for each side, and then I've got one tiny more job to do with the resin as well. It's better. I've got my rubber gloves on. Um, so I've just put a little bit of the resin in this plastic cup and a little bit of um, white acrylic paint. It is a storm cloud, it is called, if the camera focuses on it. Um, and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix this in and then once it's thoroughly mixed in, I'm going to go round the very, very edges and just want to make it look as if there's a little bit of frozen icy water um, at the edges around the rocks and where it would have caught at the end. Now, this is still see-through. It's white, but it's see-through. Hopefully you can see this. Um, the camera's in my way, so I'm actually going to move the camera to do this. Uh, and I'm just going to use the stirrer that's in it just to put a little bit down 
each end and then I'll put the UV light over it and get it to set straight away um, because I don't want it to hide from the waves or anything I've got. So let me get that done, let me glue them fences on and then I'll show you a picture of the finished thing. All right, so there we go, that's the railings in and the icy water in as well. Um, I appreciate the icy water looks a little strange at the moment but once we get all the rest of the snow in and it's kind of bedded in, it should look really good. I hope, I think. <laughs> um, but that's all dry already. So, yeah, and even with the white paint in it, it's still, because it's opaque, it's still set under the UV light. Um, so I don't want this video to get too long. So I'm actually going to leave it here. Um, and in the next video, we'll crack on. Uh, getting the rest of the ground cover down in this section um, and then I can finally clear up underneath and know that all the messy jobs apart from the snow are done um, depending on time I might even get some snow down in the next video um, but as always guys thank you for following along thank you for bearing with me I do try and get the videos out as quick as I can uh, as always any questions comments thoughts pop them down below in the comments section I always read them all um, if you like the video give it a thumbs up and I will definitely be back with one, hopefully two more videos before Christmas. I've got an overseas trip um, to do with work, but I still think I can probably chuck a couple of videos out before then. And I'm at home for Christmas, so that'll be nice. Get some more work done. Take care, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye now.